Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we are gonna go through fasting and estrogen. If you're new to my channel, you have stepped right into the middle of a fast training week where we all come together as a community and exercise our fasting muscles. And this week, it's all on hormones. So I'm putting out a video every single day talking about how you can use fasting to influence different hormones. On this video, we're gonna talk about estrogen. So sit tight, because there's a lot to say on the estrogen topic. And as always, if you're new, welcome. Please subscribe. I come to you guys every week at, for a live Q&A on Thursday. And I, I just love bringing you the science. I love bringing you the application. And I am on a mission to get a million people to this channel learning how to build a fasting lifestyle in 2021. Because as you will see, fasting heals so many different problems. So welcome. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. I'm gonna to try to simplify this for you. If you have been watching the videos that I've been doing all week, and the first one I really encourage you to go back and listen to is how to use fasting to balance your hormones. I want you to understand that hormones are a moving target and they have a bit of a tag team response. So when one hormone goes up, often another hormone goes down. And so keeping them all in balance is very tricky. When you think about estrogen, I want you to think about insulin resistance. So there are obviously two imbalances with estrogen. You are either too high or you're too low. So with each one of these imbalances, if we just solve the issue of your insulin resistance, which fasting can do amazing, we can bring people with high estrogen dominance down and we can bring postmenopausal and menopausal women with low estrogen. We can help you become more estrogen sensitive and allow those cells to actually bring the estrogen in and use them for all the wonderful mechanisms that estrogen is used for. Okay, so let's start with low estrogen. Really interesting study that I'm gonna link, as always, from the Journal of Diabetes Research showing that low levels of estrogen will hinder insulin production. So when your estrogen goes down, your pancreas does not secrete as much insulin. This is very common in women over 40. If you're a woman over 50, very, very common. Your estrogen levels are lower than they've been your whole life. So when this insulin level goes down, what is so fascinating about the human body is that it sends a signal to the liver to dump more glucose. So why would it do that? We wanna get rid of the glucose, which is great, but what ends up happening is it dumps the glucose trying to wake that pancreas up to be able to bring insulin up so that the two can come together and be more sensitive. So as insulin levels go down, glucose levels go up, and then as those two mechanisms are happening, then you start to see a dysbiosis, is what I'm gonna call it, a dysbiosis of insulin regulation. And if your insulin is out of sorts, then you're gonna find that your cells become resistant, not just to the hormone insulin, but they'll become resistant to things like estrogen. Now, low levels of estrogen also cause cellular inflammation. So we've literally got this like vicious cycle. Low levels of estrogen cause high levels of glucose. High levels of glucose put more pressure on your pancreas. Your pancreas starts overworking. When the low levels of estrogen also cause cellular inflammation and it just goes around and round and round and round. But fasting can solve this problem. So sit tight here, I'm gonna tell you which fast. Second thing is if you guys have high estrogen, like in a, sometimes for men, you guys, we've talked this about this before with the man boobs or the gut, um, or women who are, or both men and women that are having a lot of hormonal cancers. What we know is that that also is a cascading effect, where when you increase your sugar, you start to decrease testosterone. And when testosterone goes down, estrogen will start to go up and it'll make you more estrogen dominant. So, and the more estrogen dominant you are, the more insulin resistant you are. If you've been following me on this video, you might be like, wait, you said that low estrogen caused insulin resistance. 
Now you're saying high estrogen causes insulin resistance? Yes, we need insulin to be in balance for estrogen to be in balance, bottom line. Okay, how do we do that? So there are one, two, three, four, five different areas in your body that we're gonna focus on. We, we need your hypothalamus and pituitary to be in balance. We need your adrenals to be in balance. We need your liver, your ovaries and testes, uh, your gut and your cells. So there's a lot that, of tools we can use here with fasting to help balance estrogen. So let's dive into those. And I've come up with four different strategies that I'm gonna encourage you to use. So the first, Hopefully you figured this out already. Let's become insulin sensitive again. What fast does that best? If you're new to fasting, intermittent fasting is your go-to fast for insulin sensitivity. If you've been doing that and you still feel like you're insulin resistant, if your estrogen levels are still out of balance, then you're gonna need to do some longer fast. You're gonna need to push to some more of the autophagy in 24. I actually really like the 36 hour, I call it the fat burner fast to kick people out of insulin resistance. So you're gonna need to start implementing pretty regular intermittent fasting. And those of you who've been doing this for a while, push it to 36 hours. Okay, second thing, we need your liver to be really healthy. So how do we make the liver healthy? There's a couple strategies. The liver actually will break down estrogen. So we're making your estrogen production more balanced by keeping you insulin sensitive, and we're making your liver healthier so that the estrogen that you are producing can be broken down and get into the cells. So a couple of my favorite uh, fasting hacks for the liver is really this metabolic flexibility, going in and out of fat feast and famine cycling. We've talked a lot about that on here. The other place that you can look at or little hacks you can look at to help the liver is castor oil packs, uh, coffee enemas. Those are both really great for opening that liver up so that it's, it can move toxins out and it can break estrogen down. Avoiding things like alcohol and if you're on a lot of medications or recreational drugs, those kind of things are gonna make it a little harder for the liver and can cause the liver to uh, be unable to break estrogen down. So the little hacks and nuances around the liver may be really important for you. Okay, third thing, we gotta have your gut healthy. Talked about this a lot on this channel that we have a whole set of bacteria called the estrobilome that break estrogen down. Which fast helps us with gut health? And if hopefully again, I know a lot of you watch all my videos, the 24 hour fast. The 24 hour fast is your gut reset. So if you are trying to get yourself insulin sensitive, you're trying to balance estrogen, uh, you're gonna need to move into some of those longer fasts like a 24 hour fast. And then the last piece I will tell you that I find really fascinating is this idea that all of our endocrine organs work as a team and they work as a team with the hypothalamus and the pituitary. And so if we want the ovaries to be working right, if we want the testes, the adrenals, the thyroid gland, if we need all those glands to be functioning normally, we need our hypothalamus and our pituitary to be very healthy. Now remember, in this part of the brain, we've got a lot of neurons, and these neurons can start to decay, especially in the presence of too much glucose and too much insulin. Are you seeing there's a pattern here? So what can we do to regenerate these neurons? And that's autophagy fasting. So make sure you're throwing in some autophagy fasting, which is 17 hours. If you're brand new to my channel, I've done so much on autophagy fasting. But those are the four different ways we can come at estrogen. So it's not as simple, again, as me just saying, hey, boom, do this fast. With estrogen, I want you to think insulin sensitivity. I want you to be insulin sensitive. So let's start taking you through the different variations of the different fasts. And then I want you to give your liver some love. I want you to give your gut some love. And I want you to look at what we can do to minimize the toxins going into the brain. That's really the key to getting, using the principles of fasting and building a fasting lifestyle to uh, be able to balance estrogen. So let me know if that helps. Um, a lot of questions we get, you know, postmenopausal women, unfortunately our estrogen is going down, so we need to use these principles even more. Women who are infertile, 
A lot of times that you're going to need these to use these principles to ovulate properly. Men that are, have been diagnosed with breast cancer, you got to use these principles to be able to um, overcome a breast cancer um, diagnosis. So really important topic. I, I want to give you a couple different things to think about. One, if you're like, this is really fascinating, but I'm very confused. Don't worry, we've got a companion guide for you. So we've written out much of the information I'm pouring out to you this week is in a companion guide. It's free. Just put companion guide in the comments and we'll get it to you. Second, if you're a woman over 40, this is my book that I wrote for you, The Menopause Reset. It is out for pre-orders. The print will be uh, released on April 6th. So if you want to pre-order it, just put Menopause Reset and we'll send you the link. And those of you that are struggling with insulin resistant, you're struggling taking these concepts and moving your health forward, join me in my next reset. It's called the Forever Immune, where I'm gonna show you how to be a, a fat burner, I'm gonna show you how to keep your immune system strong, and I'm gonna show you how to slow down aging using these principles. There's a lot of little nuance here, and once you get the hang of it, you will feel so in control, you will feel so empowered by fasting and by fasting variation that you'll never wanna go back to eating all day again. So as always, I hope that helps and I'll see you all in the next reset and tomorrow we're gonna to talk about testosterone.